Lights are on and we are here. Golden Black Live. I will put the graphic up there and you'll see it's Kyle Charters to your far right and our special guest. We're leading off. We're going heavy early here with Mike Shandrick, Hoodie's <laughs> Equipment Manager. And a uh, uh, guy we've actually, we get so many questions all, all the time about uh, equipment and uniforms and and you're just all you do all day is sit sit back and design uniforms. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, pretty much half the day I I, <laughs> I spend just kind of come up with some new concepts and <laughs> no uniforms are a big topic though and it's uh, we get asked a lot of questions about that also. Yeah, I mean I would I would imagine and uh, we'll hit that topic. If you have questions uh, at the top of the show, you can you can in the chat room uh, send them to us. And uh, we'll get them on the air and uh, let you know, or on the internet, or whatever you want to call it. We also want to thank our sponsors, and that would be State Farm Agent uh, Trent Johnson. Trent is my agent dot com. If you want to look right behind Mike's head, it'll it'll be perfect for you. Triple X on the hill, but on the level. To, a uh, Purdue tradition since 1929, and Basham Rentals already taking rentals uh, for the 2015-16 school year. And Hilton Garden Inn, when tomorrow's a big day, stayed HGI tonight. You know, we will at least give it a three-minute window before we get to questions about uh, how many how many times you've deflated footballs. We'll get to that in a bit. But you know, in in, in, the, in the world of, did you ever envision this? I mean, you've been in this business for a long time. You came in the second year of Joe Tiller. Ah, uh, yes, 1998, second Alamo Bowl year. Yeah, and and what, you know, did you ever see all this coming at at that at that time? And as you grew up, were you a person that was kind of interested in in uh, uniforms and concepts is that how you got interested in this business or or what um actually you know i, I was just always really into sports um playing sports watching sports sports history that kind of thing and i went to grad school at michigan state and i thought you know i'd be involved like in personnel or something like that and they kind of waived my uh, out-of-state tuition and said um how about working in the equipment room they need some yeah. help there and i was like yeah well why not let's give it a <laughs> shot and I've uh, been there ever since. Uh, that yeah. was back in 1988. So and that that is a uh, that is a, a, a you know when you think about that it's uh, approaching to, you don't want to think about it too long but 27 years and doing that and thinking about the uh, that opportunity is uh, it's changed a lot in that. Time. Oh, it's amazing how it's changed the equipment, the size of the athletes. I remember my first job at Ohio University um, when I would order shoes the most popular shoe size was ten and a half, and I would order mostly ten and a half. Now our most popular shoe size is fourteen, oh. <laughs> and that's over you know, a, like you said, a twenty-some year period. So the, the kids are just you know bigger, faster, stronger nowadays. Yeah. yeah, and of course you've seen the explosion of popularity of uniforms over those those twenty years, starting sort of with with Oregon and, and trickling on to everybody else, right? Yeah, that, and you know, along with all the contracts and. Um, you know, the new designers, uh, Nike and Under Armour and Adidas and uh, the edge it has in recruiting and how important it has become in recruiting. So it's a, it's a major part now of what we do um, on a daily basis. Is, is that overblown or is that reality now? I mean, in terms of, you know, Indiana's got six different helmets. Uh, you know, obviously Purdue is, did what, how many different looks, two or three different looks last year. Uh, is, is do you view that as just is this going to get I guess maybe not not as much saying it's overblown but is this going to is there going to be more down the road or less I think it's since it's been so accepted I think it's become the norm yeah um, it is reality it is the norm um, what can you do to kind of set yourself apart and yeah. give you that look or that edge you know to attract that athlete to your school yeah. you guys got pretty good feedback from the neon the neon was cool. Um, <laughs> the concept of the whole thing was cool. I mean, yeah. cancer survivors. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when I watched the game on the, on the field, I was like, yeah, this looks good. But when I went back and saw the replay on mm -hmm. TV, I thought it looked really good, especially during the second half when the, uh, when the sun went down. Um, yeah, that was a positive uh, look. We got lucky that year because Volt was the main color for Nike that year. Yeah. And um, we, we're going to carry that one over for next year. The, Per the Cancer Society, you know, here on campus, they want to do it again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Cent yeah, Center for Cancer Research. I think that that really was as big a hit in terms of making an impact 
and we always look at things and how they come out in pictures and it is uh, interesting and, and amazing i thought it, it kind of grew on me as well I, I took a while to get used to it but once you got uh, once you got into the game a little bit it was it was uh, good from that standpoint all right, we're past our three minutes now. Have you ever deflated footballs uh, intentionally? What did Drew Brees want? He wanted a yeah, and, and, and a more, soft football. Yeah, yeah. more to the question: <laughs> is that is is that not out of the realm of possibility that coaches or quarterbacks are particular? Uh, um, or you know, I've worked with a lot of quarterbacks here. You know, Drew, Kyle, Curtis, our current quarterbacks, and we always do the same thing uh, when they come to the stadium or for a home game into the locker room. Before they get taped, we grab them. And we have all these balls laid out that we have been, you know, dealing with since really two a days. Yeah. And uh, we just say, hey, pick the balls you want. And so, you know, like Drew or Kyle or Danny, or whoever would just take them and they squeeze them or they toss them up in the air and whatever, rub them. And they're like, I like this one, this one, you know, based on the weather, pick between six or 12. And then at that point, you turn them over to the officials. Yeah. So it's the official's job. Yeah. And that's where the whole controversy, if you ask me, is. The official's job then is you have a compressor in the locker room with a with, with a gauge, and it's their job to put that in there and to say this football is legal, and then they write their initials on it, take it out, and in the game. So, and that really hasn't been talked about that much. I mean, <laughs> that's I that's what I was out. saying the that's, whole time. <laughs> I've tuned it out a little bit. I, I'll admit, but that, <laughs> but that it's an interesting. Yeah. Uh, there's somebody else besides uh, Belichick and uh, Brady that are, might be. Uh, on the hook for this so you know me being in charge and having student managers run balls yeah. i mean i would never tell them to like you know deflate the ball or something like that um it was a few years back usc i think they got in trouble mm -hmm. a ball boy yeah. not deflating it but he took a ball that wasn't checked in in the game was sitting by the kicking net and tried to get it in for a, a field goal or a kick or something so yeah, sure, it's done. If someone high enough tells you to do it, <laughs> yeah, or tells you, you know, can maybe you, can you deflate two pounds out of twelve or eleven balls in ninety seconds in a bathroom? Is that is that oh, possible? Yeah, yeah, I could do it standing, talking to someone on the sidelines, and no one would even yeah. really know. <laughs> but it's funny as, as you bring it up again is that um, we just got eighteen brand new NFL Wilson footballs in the other day uh, for our pro day, and. Barry had them in the in the basket, and I grabbed them, and I'm like, man, these things are hard. Yeah. He's like, Mike, they're not even blown up. I was like, what? <laughs> and he got a needle out, put it in, it was only at nine. Mm. So I imagine you go to 12, 12 and a half to 13, they're a rock. Yeah. And they're a lot harder than a college ball. So. All right, we have our first comment about the uniform, just saying, love the black helmet, but please do not add a white helmet to our collection. Um, what with that being said, any chance we'll see a gold jersey in the near future? Um, you know, right now, I'm sure it's already been out that we will be wearing the anthracite jersey yeah, next yeah. year. That's um, the, the gray. And it, it's the same. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but it's actually the same as our white and black jersey. Um, same number schemes. Same. Mikey called it an add-on jersey, and that's how we kind of got that one passed by. Um, you know, you go to uh, next year, we'll be on the fifth year of our uniforms, and um, year after that, you know, anything's up for grabs. So. We'll see what their designers come up with. You had been fighting with Nike for a while to get that third alternate, right? Yeah. If fighting is the right word. Fighting's a strong <laughs> word. We, <laughs> negotiating, yeah. pleading, uh, I don't Cajoling. know. Cajoling. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Illinois just got theirs last year, yeah. and they were on seven-year cycle. So it's not everybody gets uniforms when they want. It's, uh, um, and they only had a choice of three. So I believe they took um, white, orange, and gray. You notice they didn't have a blue uniform mm -hmm. last year, which is uh, for some people at Illinois probably blasphemous in terms yeah. of that. If that's the now right they'll term. get their blue the following year, but yeah. When you look at what it takes, I always think about how much work you guys have to do on helmets. When you have multiple helmets, it's as simple as just having a whole other set. Now you can't obviously with the Madden helmets you get you have to. But but how much preparation? Uh, you do a lot of work on those helmets after games to, to get them ready for the next week, especially if, uh, uh, depending on which helmet you're wearing, I presume. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is we stick with the gold as our base helmet, and we assume that we're going to wear the gold helmet most of the year, yeah. and that's the helmet we practice in. Uh, this year we did something a little different. The first three days and uh, two days when we weren't hitting, we put everybody in the black helmet uh, just to let them run around, sweat in it, kind of get used to it. Um, I think I remember some tweets on that saying yeah. that we've switched to the black helmet. <laughs> yeah. But that was our concept there. 
Um, so from there, we use the gold as the base. So if we are like the cancer helmet, then uh, Barry and the students will come in knowing we're going to wear the cancer helmet on uh, the Saturday, and they'll start as early as Sunday, right after the, the game before, uh, to start laying the, the foundation of all the stickers and, and cleaning it up. How, how long does it take to, I mean, do you, have to, do you go back in and that, uh, there's an inspection process and, and all that? I mean, it, it has to look, I mean, especially with the, and I'm, I'm uh, maybe jumping to some conclusions, but Daryl Hazel seems to be a guy that's relatively particular with how his team looks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay, I'm not jumping to any conclusions. Well, is, but, Coach picks all the looks. So, yeah. I mean, and he was really good about it last year is he gave us pretty much laid it out. So we knew week in and week out ahead of time what we had to do and you know we had to get some decals ordered or whatever. Um, you know Barry he's my assistant and uh, he he does the hands on with football each day and he is particular. I mean he'll look over the student's shoulder as they're doing it. Sometimes he won't let them even sticker the helmets. He'll do every one himself. Um, you know we broke the black helmet out two years ago and that was a total surprise. Yeah. He put them all in the visiting locker room and was in there all week by himself pretty much just getting them ready getting them ready going through and um, the big deal people really uh, you really uh, realize is every helmet is different and the fact that people have different size pads on the inside of the helmet so you have like two or three different size pads on your crown pad two or three sizes on your jaws and so you have to take each one out and you know we have a, a, a chart that matches, you know, each one of those. So it, it's a process. It's and the, a process. So the measuring process is also not you, you got to measure everybody carefully. And if, mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if linemen, offensive linemen, gain weight, they could change in theory. Is, well, haircuts are a big thing. Yeah, <laughs> dreads are a big thing. Um, a couple of things there. And now with the face masks, when we have like 15, 16 different styles of face masks, it's yeah. crazy. I mean, so. I was, uh, and, and when that will. The, You'll probably get up to 30 before that, uh, before so, that slows you down. You know, we've already changed the helmets. We've changed some decals. You know, people are changing face masks nowadays. You know, that might be the next ne next yeah. way to go with that. What will be your favorite gray involved uh, combination? Um, we've looked at that already, and I'm I'm big on you have to have the accessories around it to match. So that's like the socks and the gloves and the wristbands if you can do it. Um, so to me, the gray um, with some anthrite, anthracite socks, and you have to have the. To me, you have to have the black helmet. Yeah. yeah. Um, the question is then, what will we put on the black helmet? Yeah. So, and now, that will probably make that whole uniform jump. Mm -hmm. The, the go yeah, well, go ahead. The other, the other thing too is, um, as we looked at it, and maybe one time next year, is the gray pants would also look good on the road with the white jersey. Mm -hmm. which will give you a whole other look right. too. So we could get up to six different combinations. <laughs> and it's just amazing because you watch, I remember watching Louisville play, I think it was a game, I don't know if it was against Florida State. Where, or some, of these, some of these uniforms, it's really hard to identify if you're a traditionalist, you know, what team is on the field, so to speak, until you have to get used to it. That's just a, that's something that us old folks got to get used to, I guess, from that standpoint. The cost of a helmet itself, I mean, not, not a, with, with everything that has gone on in terms of technology and trying to, to protect the head, so to speak, on con on concuss with concussions, uh, is it a three, four hundred dollar item for a he football helmet to, for each one? Yeah, three hundred dollars is like a collegiate price, and that includes a face mask. Um, it comes with a chin strap, but that's more like a generic chin strap that we really don't use. So then we'd have to put an extra, um, you know, some money into a, a more uh, safer type protection on the chin strap. Then the actual cost, then with all these helmets that people are doing, is the paint jobs. Yeah. yeah. I mean, your paint jobs can get up to the Michigan State uh, green one that they had a couple years ago. That was seven hundred dollars a helmet. A helmet, seven hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they would have to take their own inventory, and and obviously, I mean, they, or do they just get another set of helmets? They just get another set of yeah. helmets, and you get a one-year waiver on it as far as reconditioning it, but it has to be painted after two years, and then the, the paint job is half that price just to restore it. So the helmet companies should be just, you know, really thanking the uniform companies <laughs> because yeah. um, they're the ones that really are prospering. And all yeah, this. I mean, 100, 
85 scholarship players, and you have how many how many guys dress for each home game typically at Purdue? You know, anywhere between um, you know 100, 105. So yeah, you know, you're looking at uh, uh, for some of those guys 70, 75 thousand dollars for helmets. The total uniform cost. Somebody had asked about that in terms of what's the ballpark for what it costs to put somebody in a complete football uniform. Well, alone you have about 185 into the uh, jersey and pants, and you say another 300 for the each for the helmet and shoulder pads. So that puts you about what 785, um, and then your shoes. Now I'm I'm looking at it all at our cost, like yeah. wholesale or whatever. Yeah. Shoes range from anywhere between 40 and 60, based on you know your position. Gloves range anywhere between you know, 2250 and 3250 based on your position. And you got your socks, your girdle, uh, t-shirts. Throw another combo of 30 in there, so it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know you realize you only have one cost in the um, helmet and shoulder pads. The following year you throw an extra 30 toward those, get them reconditioned and certified, and they're good to go for anywhere between five and seven years. Yeah. Who does the certification of, I mean, who, who, how does that done? Or who, who actually um, comes in? And there's does? actually a, um, an organization called NOXI, which is the safety organization that all protective equipment uses. Um, but we use Rydell, the helmet company, as our reconditioner. So they'll pick them up at the end of the year, they take them back, they clean them, um, they repaint them, and then they do a random sampling um, of, like, you know, the old drop test. They'll drop it, yeah. and uh, they'll do a side impact test, and that's all for the Noxie standards so they can put that sticker back on the helmet. So who is your most particular player who likes to look the best on game day, the guy who wants all the accessories? They all do. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's a show. It, it's, you know, they're on TV, and that's what yeah. they work hard all week for, and you know, what, whatever Nike has out there to give them, we, we give them. We're no different than any other school out there. Um, yeah, you know, that's their time to go out and have some fun. And um, if they want to look good, they look good. As long as they stay within the standard Purdue uniform, we're, we're good with that. How does, um, in terms of your favorite uniforms out there, what's the ones that catch your attention outside of Purdue's? I mean, what, what are some of the ones you like the best? Well, you know, I, I'm kind of more traditional. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I like USC's uniform. Yeah. Um, it's you know just basic. They haven't really done anything with it over the years. Um, I've always kind of like Michigan State's uniform. They really haven't tweaked theirs much over over the years. Um, I think our uniform is really nice. It's, I think it's very. It's, some people might say it's plain, but I, I think it's, it's sharp. You, know, you see the pictures later on after a game, and if you accessorize it nice with different color options i mm. think it really pops yeah anything else from you kyle go ahead you don't like maryland's i'm guessing then. no yeah <laughs> <laughs> to make checkerboards yeah i just stripes and um I, I like i like what oregon does um I, I like when they use their silver and gray and i, I think it looks it looks good how many questions do you get from fans or or players or recruits or or what have you about uniforms or combinations or suggestions or Oh, we get, a, we get a lot of suggestions, uh, not too much criticism. Um, no one really says, you know, you have a bad uniform yeah, or anything yeah. like that. Um, I think, you know, just this past two years with the introduction of the different helmets and things like that, um, for the most part, people are a lot more positive. Um, they like the new looks. Recruits always ask, you know, like we have the recruits come in. We, we just lay out a huge display. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically everything we have, every uniform combination and, um, they love it. You know, they try it on. They look at it. They all, they think that's kind of cool. They, they you know they like the fact that we have the Nike contract, which is uh, which is a positive. So I'd say for the most part, everyone's been pretty positive. Yeah. Look at one one question about uh, wearing the black jerseys on 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 hot September days and whether you have any choice. When did, I know there was what what for the Rose Bowl anniversary you wore white at Purdue wore white at home. You obviously wore white at home against Michigan State this mm -hmm. year. Uh, is that something you just have to declare at at a certain point in time? Do you have a certain date where you have to tell the opponent what to? Or and it is is it the home team's choice to be able to wear in college football light or dark? Um, to my knowledge, it's always you wear your dark uniform at home unless you're having a special occasion. So you have to, and then you have to yes. submit that. So like a couple of years ago, uh, I believe it was Coach Hazel's first game, we opened to Cincinnati, we wore black because yeah. they did the white out in the stadium. Mm -hmm. and that was a really hot day. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. um, 
You know, the, it's black. Sure, it's gonna you know it's gonna absorb the sun and all that. But um, those things are very breathable. Uh, they're dry fit. They pretty much you sweat it rolls right off yeah. of you. Um, the Michigan State one, uh, we looked at the concept way back, starting in February prior to the season, yeah. and um, we came up with the concept of the helmet. And we're like, you know what? This is just not going to look good with our uniform if we go black because of the gold numbers. And so we said, but you know what? It looks really good yeah. with white on white. And so, first of all, you just asked Michigan State. And they, we, I believe it was our ops guy, sent them a letter. They said, yeah, that's cool. If it was me, I think it would be great because then you wear dark on dark on the road, on grass. Yeah. Save you a lot of laundry. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> wearing white on white on the Ross Aid field is, uh, makes for a long week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say So, that. especially turned around and went right to Minnesota the next week. And I, don't, I think we were white on gold. I think we were white on white again. Yeah. I believe we did. Yeah. You had white. Yeah, white pants up there. Yeah, right. so, so we turned those around in a week to get them back out. Um, the washing process and getting all that together it happens. Do you have them all ready by, I mean, is that, is that a Saturday night, Sunday process? I mean, what is your day, day like on game day typically? Well, game day we usually arrive five hours before the game. Um, and the washing process starts immediately after the game. So as soon as they start turning them in and we're checking them off, they're going straight into the washing machine. Uh, we do just a regular uh, wash with a little bit of additive in it that we have through our laundry company. Uh, so from there then, all the ones that are declared good are, are go to the dryer, and if they're not, they just go to a cart off to the side, and those then we will restart rewashing on Monday. As long as you do not dry something that's been, uh, you know, has grass or whatever on it, you're, you're good to wash and uh, treat it as many times as possible without worrying about the stain setting. But uh, yeah, we try all new kind of things with that. We try old wives' tales. <laughs> change, <laughs> we, change we do everything. We have toothbrushes. Um, it's crazy too, because we're really particular about it. And I'll take a pair of pants and I'll be like, oh man, this doesn't look good, but you know, I, so we put them on somebody. Yeah. You're watching the game. You can't tell. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I watch a game on TV. You cannot tell. Not even the world of high definition. It doesn't no, change it that. does not. So um, white is hard. White is hard. All right. Well, I, I, we're gonna we this discussion because we didn't get into basketball uniforms, and there's a whole other whole other discussion from that standpoint. But uh, we appreciate you joining the show, and we'll do it, it again sometime. And and uh, we'll look forward to. Gosh, it's uh, September the fifth, I believe, is at Marshall. Yeah. And uh, the Thundering Herd and the, the Boilermakers will be in their light jerseys, I would presume, for that game, unless they yeah. have a green out. Well, they'd have to have a white out, I guess, there as well at Marshall. But that would be an interesting, uh, interesting game as well. So, hey, thanks again, Mike, for, for, for joining thanks us. Thanks for having look me. Forward to, thanks look Kyle. forward to uh, uh, talking with you further down the road. Okay, we're going to take a two-minute break and bring Walter Jordan on, and we'll talk some old-time Purdue basketball and the 40-year anniversary of the uh, Soul Patrol, which will hit that topic and more. A lot of people have no idea what that is, but we'll try <laughs> to explain that uh, to you when we, uh, when we join again in a couple of minutes on Golden Black Live. <laughs> 